Switching gears real quick to um, Devin Haney. How, um, how impressed were you with his performance this past weekend, though? Devin did exactly what his corner wanted him to do. Uh, Yoel Judah was expressing to him, box, box, and that's what he did. He boxed for 12 rounds. Uh, he made it look like easy work, and that's because he followed the instructions of his corner and he utilizes true capabilities. And of course, the number one weapon in boxing is the jab, and that's what won him to fight. You know, technically, even before the fight officially happened, um, Cambosis and Haynes did have a rematch clause, and Cambosis did say that, hey, you know, at the end of the year, I want to run it back. Do you think they should run it back, or do you think it was just so lopsided that, hey, Haney doesn't really need to fight him again? In, in my book, it makes no sense. I see the same scenario repeating itself. Uh, I don't want to see that. I want to move on to the more exciting capabilities that are out there. The, the matchups in the lightweight division are super duper exciting. There's so many of them. Let's move on to that because I don't want to see uh, Haney Cambosis too. He already took con full control and I think it, it'll be just worse the next time around. Gotcha. Now, before they officially fought, Tank had came out and said, hey, you know, I want to fight Devin. Or I want to fight the winner of Devin and Cam or Devin Haney and um, Cambosis. Since Devin did win, let's just say that Devin was to fight Tank. How would you see that fight playing out now? That would have to be a very, very strategic fight. You have the articulate boxer facing the extreme the extremely powerful um, Davis and his ability to render you unconscious. So I, I think that um, it'll be a great fight. And I, honestly, I can't even pick a, a winner on that one. Anybody you would lean towards right now? I, I like power, so I'd have to lean towards uh, Davis. Wow, okay. So other than um, other than Tank, there was a little bit of rumors talking about, hey, you know, Haney could end up fighting Lomachenko. Is that a fight that you believe Haney is ready for now and a fight that he could win? I know you're extremely high on Loma now. Uh, he's, he's an undisputed world champion. He has to face everyone now. You have every belt, so that's, that is your, your history and that's your pedigree now. You have to face all comers because you have all the straps. And, and that, saying that, that will be a really strategic bout. Um, Lomachenko is a very kinetic and articulate fighter. He, he, he does things that a lot of people can't do. And um, Haney would have to be on his very best, very, very best to meet this challenge. Who would you pick in that fight, man? Um, I would, I would have to actually say that I would, I would pinch a little bit towards, um, Haney because of the size, believe it or not. Uh, but Lomo, <laughs> if Lomo is on fire, it's going to be trouble in the house. Do you think, well, he hasn't fought since he fought Richard Comey last year in December. Right. Do you think a little bit of ring rust could affect him in that fight? I mean, it could, or, or the, the, the rest might have helped him. He might have needed that rest, and, and he comes back 150%. Gotcha. So we, we, it's, it's, a, it's a hard question, but it's a question I'd love to have answered. <laughs> and just on my last thing, did you get a chance to watch him anyway um, yesterday, actually, in the morning? Oh my God. The, <laughs> NUA is like a superhero. Unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. The, the baddest little man on the planet. Truly. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, I don't think there's really anything at 118 for him. I think he needs to go up to 122 just because there's nothing at 118. Well, that's actually perfect because, you know, Fulton, Stephen Fulton has said time and time again, once he fights MJ for Undisputed and provided he beats him, that he wants to fight anyway. How would you see that fight playing out? Who would you give the edge to, Fulton or anyway, man? Um, 
I love Steven. Steven is a bad boy. I mean, he's a sharpshooter. Uh, his nickname should be Razor because that's how sharp he is when he's working. He works off his jab, his, his counters, his combinations, um, his inside work, his footwork is, is all, all on the scale of fabulous. And um, anyway, would have to move up to meet him at it. Now, I'll put it to you like this. If anyway can bring all of those good things up to 122, we're talking about a hell of a fight that I would have to side with anyway on. But if he can't bring that 100% to 122, the bad boy at 122, Stephen Fulton, is going to have some fun in that ring. Gotcha. And just my last thing, man. Is anyway the best fighter in the world? I would have to say right now he is. He's he's better he, than better than Crawford, better than Spence. Well, remember when we say best fighter in the world, it's in their in their weight classes, what how they maintain and how they control the environment. You have to give him incredible credit for what he's doing. I mean he's destroying legends. And and with that being said, you have to give him the credit. Remember, the mythical pound for pound ranking is all about what you do, where you're at. What he's doing, where he's at, is bordering on miraculous and incredible. Thank you, Dre. Appreciate you, man. No doubt.